Hey VC, Big Star 1000, uh, give me 10, 1978. Um, much more straightforward to compile than 1977. Um, it just was a very quick process to, to find those 10 records. Thank you for the interactions, uh, comments, video responses, etc. Love all of it. Uh, I, I was, you know, you know, that's what we do it for. And that's what I'm doing this series for. It's to get more videos happening so that people have a better experience of the VC. Uh, and I'm thinking of extending the series or actually doing a new series 1980 forward to 1989. I've got lots of records that I'd you know, be prepared to discuss. If you're against this idea completely, let me know in the comments. But I think, you know, what would you? It's, uh, it's you know, it's just talking about records. The great thing about doing these every week is it, it focuses my listening to one year. And I don't know if you found the same thing by doing this series as well, if you've been participating, but it actually does, you know, limits your limits, but at the same time, it's a very wide range of records that you can access. So I love doing that because, so after this video, I'm going to do a uh, Revolutions number 52, where I'm going to showcase all the rejects, rejects, you know, all the records non-selected for this. So uh, I hope you enjoyed both of those videos. Uh, I'm going to start. And I'm going to start with two quintessential New York records, arguably the two best records of of, uh, of 78, where two records made in New York City. The first one is this absolute masterpiece, and uh, words, the word is right. Uh, talking Heads, more songs about building and food, which in my opinion is the first truly great Talking Heads record. I mean, I know people talk about Talking Heads 77, which I love, but I don't think it's it's quite on a par with this. This is a set of absolute top-notch songs. There's not a bad song on this, uh, from uh, the opener, which is uh, Thank You For Sending Me An Angel, to uh, you know Warning Signs, A Girl's Want To Be With The Girls, Found A Job Is Great, um, Stay Hungry, almost my favorite song on the record, Take Me To The River, the Al Green cover. Produced by Brian Eno um, and kind of an official, um, unofficial fifth member. And, um, you know, I was reflecting upon Eno's importance in the in music and, and, and how all these great albums that he produced and arguably some of my favorite albums in the late 70s period from, you know, Low to Heroes to Talking Heads to the Eno records. Have that in common is that they've got Brian Eno in them. Um, so I highly recommend this record. Uh, Talking Heads, uh, more songs about building and food. And if I'm going to find another New York record that matches this word for pan for pan, it is the uh, absolutely essential music for 18 musicians by Steve Reich. Uh, which I have on CD, and I will justify this by saying that this album is better on CD than on vinyl because you don't have to turn it because it's a it's a it's a, a piece that you can listen in one go and uh, uninterrupted. And I think I've never bought this on vinyl because I've had this on CD for years and years and years, and it's probably the record that I play the most when I have a dinner party or lunch. Uh, here at my house, just put this on in the background. It never fails to amaze people. Uh, basically, is um, yeah, is it's a kind of a micro symphony um, for 18 musicians, which is very uh, a very percussive um, type of uh, uh, looping, repetitive patterns. Um, uh, which is completely spellbinding and mesmerizing. I can't really talk about this in very objective terms. If you've never heard this record, you haven't lived, really. <laughs> what can I say? Um, number three on this list, 
no surprise uh, here, uh, the man machine, uh, the mensch machine, Kraftwerk. Uh, I keep saying this, but this is one of the best bands that ever made records. I mean, really, you can't fault Kraftwerk. And this, to me, is probably the second best record after uh, Trans Europe Express, which I showed in the last installment. Um, and this is, it's top notch. I mean, from the robots to, I mean, everybody knows the model and um, neon lights is fantastic. Just everything about it. And this sort of um, Soviet style iconography and it's, it, there's something about it. It's, it's conceptually, it, it, it's a very high you know, level of of ideas, if you like. Um, on a completely different plane of existence, um, One Nation Under a Groove by the mighty Funkadelic George Clinton. Um, surely one of their best records. I mean, really, maybe, maybe their best record. Who knows? Uh, one with obviously the title track, which is it never fails to amaze me, but the whole record is 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 a trip. And uh, Funkadelic, yeah, band uh, which doubled up as Parliament as well. If you don't know, Funkadelic Parliament, same band, same musicians. It, it amazes me how they could make those different type of record. I mean, the P Funk records, but but how they could keep making records as two different band names, but but sort of quite different records too, you know. Uh, One Nation Under a Groove. Okay, I'm going to continue with a trio of uh, English records. Um, the first one is uh, the first, first Kate Bush record, The Kick Inside. Uh, which she recorded when she was 19 years old. You can't believe it. When you listen to this and you just think, this girl was 19 and she could do this, it's completely amazing. Um, and obviously, everybody knows Weathering Heights, and um, I'm sure a lot of people would have heard James and Nicole Gunn and, you know, songs like, um, well, the, the title track is fantastic, the last song. Uh, the opening song is fabulous and moving. Uh, is a, a, an absolute milestone of uh, modern music. Uh, the kick inside, and it's not even her best album, not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, this is why I want to do some 1980s uh, gimme tens. <laughs> Kate Bush will appear. Uh, so um, I was talking about this band last week. And I will talk about them again. Uh, Chairs Missing by Wire on Harvest. Um, equally as fabulous as Pink Flag, although maybe less direct and less, you know, maybe less visceral than Pink Flag, but nonetheless, maybe a little more, a little more arty, a little more, um, what would you say, cerebral. Uh, than uh, than Pink Flag, but you know, uh, if you've never heard Adol Minor or I'm the Fly, I think Adol Minor is probably the best song on the album, the the, the most sort of poppy song. If you want to sample something, Adol Minor, which is the I'm the Fly as well, is superb. Uh, so yes, another great effort by London's Wire. And this is a truly fantastic Manchester record. Uh, this is the debut album by Magazine Real Life. The band formed by Howard Devoto after he left the Buscocks. Now, it's interesting because the Buscocks released two great albums in 78, which is uh, um, um, another music uh, in, a, uh, in a different kitchen. Is that right? Is that what it's called? I've got it here in my box somewhere. Um, I'll show it to you in the um, in the uh, gimme ten. There it is. Look, what is it called? Uh, another music uh, in a different kitchen. That's correct. And also love bites. But then 
the Verger left the Buscocks to make this band, uh, which features Barry Adamson, uh, which also went on to be in Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds uh, later. This is just an absolutely amazing essential album from the opener, Definitely Gaze, uh, shot by both sides, which is also a Buscock song. Uh, I think if you've got singles going steady by the Buscocks, you've got another version of that song with different lyrics. Uh, the Light Pours Out of Me is an absolutely amazing song. Uh, magazine from Manchester, UK. Um, and I will finish with a trio of American records. Uh, another Brian Eno production, uh, Are We Not Men? We are Devo with its um, Dada-esque lyrics and you know crazy attitude and uh, this is po you know American post punk is has got a very um, interest interesting slant. It's very uh, um, surreal and uh, surrealistic, really, uh, rather than anything else. Uh, the band fronted by Mark Mothersbaugh. Um, there they are, Devo with uh, the uh, classic uh, cover of uh, Satisfaction by the Stones. It's probably the only Stone song that I can stand this to this day. Um, I don't like the Rolling Stones. Sorry, people. Um, I just find the music completely uninspiring. But when Devo do it, I like it. <laughs> yeah, you know, give me a dislike if you want. I don't care. That's what I think. It's my opinion. Um, and this year, produced by Brian Eno, uh, Mongoloid is <laughs> inappropriate, but great. Um, uh, the opener is fantastic. Uncontrollable Urge. Uh, Devo from Akron, uh, Akron, Ohio, uh, which, uh, interestingly enough, uh, this band is also from Ohio. Uh, Cleveland, uh, The Modern Nets, Per Ubu. Very again, very surrealistic kind of lyrical ability. Uh, fantastic record from back to front. Um, the vocal of uh, the vocals of David Thomas, the man who you know probably inspired Frank Black to be a singer. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful album on Blank Records. Um, I mean, again, I talk about the opener, but the opener there, No Line Pact, is... Um, what I love about this here is the closing song, Humor Me, which is kind of a, a reggae-esque song. And finally, look, 12 minutes, 30 minutes, very, very short. Um, the last record is always kind of a little bit of a surprise. I, I've tried to make... And uh, 1978, you know, I tried to... to, to Pick a record that you know embody the zeitgeist, the uh, the spirit of the times. Uh, what did people listen to in nineteen seventy eight? Disco, yes, indeed. And disco is not a genre of music that was well served by the album format. Most of the time, we talk about twelve inch uh, records mixed in clubs. You know, that's you know. Think of clubs like the Paradise Garage and places like that, or Studio 54. What did they do? They played disco in 12-inch. This is, to me, probably the greatest example of disco on album. Say Chic by Chic with, obviously, The Freak is the classic track. I mean, it's everybody knows it. But Savoir Faire is brilliant. Instrumental funk, really, really good. Uh, I Want Your Love is just simply one of my favorite songs. It's just, you know, the bells and everything, the the girls, you know, their, their sort of honey vocals. And at least, um, sorry, At Last I'm Free, which was covered by Robert White on an album that I'm going to show you in the box uh, in Revolutions 52, if you watch it. Uh, but this is a great album. Uh, Bernard Edwards and Nile Rogers, uh, and you can on this you can hear Daft Punk um, forty years before the fact. Well, largely because um, Nile Rogers produced the latest Daft Punk record. But I'm just I'm just being 
stupid here. C'est Chic, a great New York record. So there you go. Give me 1078. One more, and then we'll move into the 80s. Leave me some comments and interact with me and, you know, disagree if you want. Um, I'd be too happy to, um, you know, talk shit with you. <laughs>